Okay, fly ball coverage is exactly the same. Okay, for both the plate and the base umpire. Uh, we still have a rotation, first and second fly ball tag up. The plate guy is going to rotate up to third base, and he takes play at third, correct? Okay. He'll you take that. Communicate that before the start of the play. Exactly. Just like you talked about communication previously, we're always communicating. So you guys do your pre-pitch. I don't know what you do. Infield fly, whatever. Infield fly, we're rotating the third, right? On the tag up. All that kind of stuff. Pre-pitch so that everybody's on the same page. And then still, when that play happens and you're rotating up the third and you're going to take that play into third, communicate to your guy. Let him know you're here or that you're taking this play. Whatever verbiage you want to use. Let him know you're here because he might have, he has two runners, right? So he has every play at first, and second, and third unless you get there, right? So make sure we're all peeking at him and we're all virtually, visually and verbally communicating to each other on what our responsibilities are. Especially in the chair, why don't you put the runners on there? Which one do you want to be purple? Yeah. Does that make it easy for you? First and second. Um, we didn't talk about double plays, we got first only, but I'll go back to it later when we get back to this side of the infield, when we do first and third. But as far as double plays, when you're on the third base side of the infield, as the base umpire, we want to try to get across the working area. We call this area the working area. The whole area that the base umpire basically stays in for the most part, unless he's taking a play on only one runner out of base, it's the working area. So you're on this side, the third base side to start. Now, if you have a ground ball, whether it's third baseman, shortstop, second baseman, or first baseman, and it's going to be a double play ball, he's going to throw it to second base. You're going to slide across the working area because what's the toughest play for us in this situation? The back, the back end of double play first. That's the whacker play right here. We want to be closer to this play so we can hear the sound of the glove and the feet, all that kind of stuff. And also, so we're not too far away where if he comes off the bag, we at least can give ourselves a chance to see. So get across here, make sure we're stopped when this play happens at second, and all it is is turn for this play at first. Okay, just try to get some distance across the infield so that this play at first is a little easier for us to handle. You got all the bases. Correct. Yep. Third. That's what I see a lot of times with uh, younger umpires that are working in the uh, C position is that they'll they'll start going towards second base, yeah. which is the exact worst thing you want to do. Yeah. You, you want to keep your chest on the ball, if I remember correctly, and cheat into that working area, tighter to the mound, trying to work your way over to first base. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to get sucked in, is kind of what you're saying. So a lot of guys, when they first start out, everybody's, most of everybody has played baseball, right? at some point in time in their lives. And you're always taught to go towards the ball, right? Well, it's the opposite of umpiring because you have multiple responsibilities. If you run, say the ball's hit the shortstop, and you start either moving towards the ball there or move, moving towards second base, and you get sucked in here, yeah, that play could blow up on you, but look how far away you are from all these other possible plays that you could have, right? So if this guy's safe, if you come here, this guy runs to third, this guy's out, this guy save it first, and they snap throw back here, right? He's going to be here easy. Second baseman snap throws back. You're screwed. Look at you. You're kind of looking up his butt, right? The ass end of the play back here. So that's, yes, that's a good point, Lenny. Don't get sucked in. In the two-man system, you only have two guys. You have a base guy covering three bases most of the time. Everybody has a tendency to want to move. There's sometimes you don't have to. Like, as we talk about, I'll go back to this, it's the easiest explanation. Guy on first, ground ball to the second baseman. Really, all I do, ground ball to the second baseman, second base is there, I step up, turn, face the ball. I'm right there. Play a second happens, I'm square to the ball, right? Just the ball, play a first happens. Look, that's like four steps, and they're all drop steps. I basically ended up in the same spot, right? You're not getting sucked in, you don't have to move a lot. Because most of the time, you'll, you see in the big leagues, they have replay now. Most of the plays that the guys are missing, they have so much experience, it's unbelievable. They know where the play's gonna happen. Most of the time, if they're missing a call, it's because they're moving. Because they're used to it. They can do it. They can get there. They've seen the play a hundred times before. But that one time that it happens a little differently, and they're moving when the play happens, blows up on you. You miss it. Get the call. 
right? So there's not a situation, Adam, you're keeping your chest on the ball all the time. Your ball takes you to the play. Exactly. That's why when I demonstrate, like I stepped up, turned, face the ball, imagine that there's just a ball in the string and switch your chest. Wherever that ball goes, your chest goes, right? Wherever it goes. If you turn your back on the ball for a split second, you're screwed. What happened? You don't know. It's like they try to do the trick plays at second or whatever. The guy will get a double, come in, and the guy will stand there, short side and hold the ball, fake, throw it back in front of the to the pitcher, whatever. They'll hold the ball on him. And the guy will, I don't want to say amateur umpires, but guys with little experience, be like, oh, yeah, okay, next play, turn your face and mound, the guy steps off second base, he tacks, and you're screwed. That's why we keep our chest ball. We might give it away, but at least we know what's going on, right? It's not up to us for to trick the guy, right? So, any other questions? No, I'm just trying to add on. To the oh, you're perfect. I like the questions. They're good. So we covered first and second. Let we me go back. First and second. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you What do you want to know, Carl? Uh, less than two outs. Fly ball down the right field line. Fly ball down the right field line. Less than two outs. Is, is, so it's a fair foul decision, this guy. Okay. He's coming up, clearing the catcher. He's moving the direction of the ball. Obviously, he's on the fair foul line for a fair foul decision, catch no catch. Now what? The base guy's got to take a rotation. Third base. That's what you're, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I covered it quickly before, but yeah, okay. If you go up here, first baseline at all, even if you mistakenly go up there, if you move any direction up the first baseline, this play at third on the tag up is now the base umpire's responsibility. But you're telling them everything on that side. Sure. That's and that's why, as Lenny pointed out, we communicate. If you let the base umpire know that you've got the ball, I got the ball. He I now knows ball. exactly. He now knows he has responsibility for this play at third base. And as a plate umpire, once that catch no catch happens and you've rendered your decision, you just move back to the plate for any play. Does the plate umpire have a tag? Uh, no. If I, yeah, I don't want to. No, not the two-man system. This the base guy is responsible for tag up at first, tag up at second, and play into every base, first, second, and third. The only thing he doesn't have is home. He's got that catch, no catch down the right field line. The priorities are fair foul and then catch, no catch. That's a good timing, uh, a mechanic, is it not? It is. That's what we teach. It's fair foul, catch, no catch, and then other play responsibilities, whatever that may be. That could be uh, throw back into second or whatever the case may be, wherever that play takes you. But yes, it's fair foul, catch, no catch. That's why when a ball hits the ground and it's fair and it's a whacker catch trap, you point first, fair foul, first responsibility, and then your catch, no catch, no catch. And that split second of, of judging the their foul in your mind allows you to confirm that we got no catch. Exactly. Or we got a catch and you're going to sell it either way. Good timing. It's the key. Yeah. Anything else for first and second? What else? Uh, first and third? Maybe first and third. 